Welcome to this week's video. Today I thought we'd go over some of the maintenance issues that I have with keeping the camper on the truck all winter long, especially in Minnesota when we're dealing with salt on the roads. First thing, we gotta get in and wash this truck and camper because it is an absolute mess. So close to home, I've got a semi-truck washing station and that's where we're going today. These things ain't the cheapest, but they get the job done. One big issue that you get driving these trucks in the winter time is the rust. Check this out. Now I'll be able to fix that. All of that stuff will come right out. What happens is when you drive down the road, you get a lot of debris that hits these jacks and those little rock chips start rusting. Then the rust just starts spreading and it looks a lot worse than it actually is. For now, I gotta give this thing a bath. That is so much more respectable. We're gonna get home and I'm gonna show you guys what I do to take care of these issues with the rust. And like I said, it looks a lot worse than it really is. Here in Minnesota, we can go weeks, if not months, without having clean roads. So they're finally clean. I had to get that wash done today. It's 25 degrees out, it's a good day. Well, now that I'm home, I can see I got a couple of more things to work on than just besides the surface rust. Two of these doors have broken through the winter months and some of my screws are pulling out of the trim. They're showing signs of rust as well. Let's get this taken care of. The first thing that I'm gonna do is put some of this iron out on the surface rust. This stuff works wonders. For the most part, it just wipes clean. Just like magic, they're good to go. I have a little spray wax I'll put over the top of this just to keep it from rusting out anymore this winter. I'm not gonna paint them until we get at least 50 degrees out here. This looks a lot better though. Next thing I gotta do is pull these bolt heads out, find out why they're corroding, and replace them with stainless steel ones. Most likely gonna find that the wood back here is possibly a little damp. Because last year, I ended up replacing a bunch of this on the other side, and uh, I just put the old screw heads back in there. So we're gonna get those taken out, put the stainless steel ones back in. I'm just gonna be replacing all of the screws on this trim piece with stainless steel ones. These new stainless steel screws are a tad bit bigger and longer than the old ones. We wanna make sure that when we're putting these in, we don't dig too hard because we don't wanna distort this metal ring going around there. I think the stainless steel looks a lot better. Now what I gotta do is put a new lock on the outside of this cabinet door.
So I bought the new thumb lock at Camping World. It was 13 bucks. Should be pretty easy to put in place. And it just takes a little bit of experimenting to find out which lock set is going to be right for your application. Perfect. Throughout the winter time, this thumb tab has broken off. And also, the locking mechanism inside here, that's broken off as well. Good as new. But for the most part, this 20 year old camper, she's holding up really well. Well, I think the camper handled the Minnesota winter really well. I left it on all winter long. I didn't take it off once and you guys saw a couple of the pieces that I had to replace. The last step, we'll be getting on the roof. We'll check out all the seals up here. And we can see some of my repairs from earlier this summer. The Eternabon tape's holding up really nice. All of the self-leveling sealant sitting down really well. And you can see that I wasn't very shy when I put that self-leveling sealant on. And this is a great time to check the front cap as well. I replaced it a couple of years ago. Now you can get a really good look at these clearance lights, making sure that there's no moisture inside them. Well, everything outside the camper is checked out. I think we'll go inside. I'll answer a couple of questions that you guys have had throughout the winter with the camper. So one of the questions I get a lot is, do I keep water in the camper all winter long? And the answer to that is no. Come about at the end of December, getting into January, we start seeing temps 35, 45 below zero. It'd be too expensive to keep this camper heated to keep them water lines thawing out. You guys have seen in previous videos that I have a thermometer that measures the temperature in my holding water, my gray water tanks, my dump valve. And when it's zero degrees outside, I can maintain a nice even temperature in the basement of the camper. Once I get 20 to 30 below zero, it's too hard to maintain 30 degrees in the basement. So you guys that have been watching me for a while know that I'm just a weekend warrior. I'm not full timing in this thing. I basically am out enjoying the weekends and taking you guys with me. So I still got to do dishes. What I do is I just carry water with and I still will use the sink. The trick is to bring some RV antifreeze with and dump that down the sink with the water. Always making sure that the jape trap in the sink has a little bit of antifreeze in it this is the stuff i buy it says it's good to 50 below zero i don't know how much i trust that though because i've had this stuff freeze in the camper and then when i'm done camping for the weekend what i do is i come back to the house and make sure that i dump out that gray water tank right away i don't use the shower or toilet during the winter time for that i got another solution now this one the kids girlfriend or wife they might not like this in my bathroom I keep a spare toilet and then in a little bit my kitchen turns into my bathroom I picked this guy up at Walmart and they're pretty cheap and the way they work is you buy these bags they fold out into the toilet and that's where you do your business now I know you're thinking, geez, that's not too sanitary. And you know what? It actually folds up and then double seals. I'll put this outside in the box where I have my sewer hose. Then when I get back home from camping, I'll just take the three or four frozen bags and throw them in my dumpster. I bought this toilet at Walmart about six years ago. They still carry the bags and uh, they're not that expensive. You can pick up five or six of these bags for a couple of bucks. Well, this video, it's been a bit of a short one, but I think that's okay. I've been busy all week long. Next week, Mandy and I are going on a road trip. I'm bringing you guys with, so make sure you tune into that. For now, we got this one in the bag, so I'll see you again next week. But until then, be kind, be honest. We'll see you down the road.